Look at the head coaches, a couple of outstanding head coaches. Kyra Elzier, third year as the Wildcats head coach, led them to an historic run last year. And Jeff Walls, who has taken Louisville to four Final Fours, including last season, the winningest coach in the program's history. So set to go, Kentucky coming in 7-1, and one. Louisville a little disappointing right now at 6-4. and four. They'd have a nice win over top five Texas in the Bahamas, where Louisville also lost in overtime to Gonzaga. You were down there to watch that. I was, and really, Louisville is really looking to be more connected this point moving forward. Now Kentucky's only lost to number 14, Virginia Tech. Then underway as the Cardinals win the opening tip. Louisville has beaten Kentucky five in a row. So that sticks a little bit in a rivalry game. Carr trying to go downstairs and swooping inside for two. Liz Dixon, you talked about her getting into the starting rotation. Well, she started the first four games of the season. Jeff Walls wanted to exploit the size advantage that Louisville has and really set the tone early in this game. Well, here's Walker with a touch. 15 points, about three and a half assists per game. That one sent right back by Morgan Jones. The FSU transfer at 6-2. And a battle for the board. That's kicked around and taken back outside. A long one by Carr. She is easily Louisville's best three-point shooter. See, that's why that length for the Cardinal have really paid off with Liz Dixon in the start lineup. And Cochran at 6-3. Coming up a pair of double rebounding games this season so far. Shear went into heavy traffic, really one of the better point guards you're going to see this year. And tied up on the floor. And a 4-0 start here for the Cardinals. Well, Louisville using the ball screen high in the slip by Liz Dixon inside. And they battled on the glass. Dixon again, this time getting the assist to Olivia Cochran. Cochran averaging about seven rebounds a game. Really crashes the glass particularly well. Walker coming off 19 against Minnesota. She's going to be blocked again. As that one goes out of play. Jeff Walls has put Morgan Jones on Jada Walker. Knowing what a threat she is to attack the basket. Jones is a freak of nature defensively. She's so athletic and very long. Jeff already working the officiating crew and a whistle in the paint. And that was with four on the shot clock. And that'll go against Carr, number one on the 5-5 grad out of Davenport, Iowa. So that'll put Benton at the line, where she makes 77%. She's actually Kentucky's number one shot taker. Scuffling beyond the three-point line, makes a lot of them inside the three-point line. Kyra Elsie calls Robin Benton showtime. So when they need a big bucket, when they need to score, you will see Kentucky run a lot of things to number one in blue. Starting lineup for Louisville. When we talk about Van Lith averaging 20.6 rebounds. They get 11 out of Carr. They get 10 points a game out of Jones as well. Her defense, on this, these two going against each other. Jada Walker, oh. Chris Carr gets by. Pretty move there, couldn't finish it. But up and in easily by Dixon, who's off to a quick start here. And so is Louisville ahead 6-1. to one. Walker pushing it. Now we'll kick it for Shear and switches in the triple from the corner. Louisville was going to play off Maddie Shear because Shear transferring in out of from Oregon. She's been known more as a playmaker, but Kyra Elsie said, listen, here in Kentucky, you're going to have to shoot the ball. She knows that. She's from Florence, Kentucky, and as you mentioned, coming home. And it came down to these two schools, didn't it? It did. And this is the first Kentucky-Louisville bragging right game that Maddie Shear is participating in. But CC Carr, she misses that one, but there you have the bigs to clean it up, and then Maddie Shear on the other end, knocking down the three. Talk about Robin Benton having that nickname from her head coach. Did you do that for your coaches? Did you hang like a showtime or big time on a player, a whistle in the lane? Look, I didn't want my coach to call my name because usually it might have been for a mistake. As long as they were, <laughs> you know, didn't say anything, I felt like I probably, hopefully, did something good. 
You know, I play at Vanderbilt. We have benches on the end line. So when I took a shot or an ill-advised shot I knew Coach Lee didn't like, I ran down the other side of the yeah. floor so I couldn't hear. There was beauty in that setup at Vanderbilt. You could get away from your head coach <laughs> in a hurry. Jones at the line. She had 18 in the game against Texas, the 6-2 grad. And then the FSU transfer. It's a strong all-around game. What I love about Morgan Jones' game is you're going to see her rebounded on the defensive end, and she can go coast to coast. She has great handles, and she's really working on improving defensively because I think she's got the potential to have more of a – oh, that's a good break into the press for Kentucky. But she's got to have a defensive presence for Louisville like the greats of Angel McCautry. Mm -hmm. She could do that. Benton finishing on the other end for the Wildcats as they pull it in two here at Rupp Arena. Expecting a good crowd. Cochran on the move and denied. Petty got a hand on it, but it winds up two points anyway. Fell right into the hands of Liz Dixon. The Kentucky's going to have to find a way to stop the production of Louisville in the paint. Walker trying to get going. The scoop shot, and she's on the line, and we'll give it back on a turnover. When Louisville scores, they get their defense set, right? But what Kentucky has done is be patient and beat the press on the pass and attack, not just wait and pull back to set up in the half court. Talk about points in the paint, early trend. Louisville on top, 8-2 there. And you thought that would be the case as we came on the air. So far, Van Lith has been real quiet, but she'll draw the foul. The junior from Washington State. And the offense typically, everything runs through her. She's the engine. Benton will pick up the foul. It's been very difficult for CC Carr to really get into the offense early or to get the ball to Haley Van Lith because of the pressure from Jada Walker. And a double-double against Ohio State. 28 points against IUPUI. She was, of course, the Wichita region most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament. The great run by Jeff Walls in Louisville again. See, to beat a press more times than not, if you flash somebody into the middle, you make the defense overshift, and then on that reversal, you have options. Sheer outside the three point line. Green thought about a long distance shot and gave it away. Great hustle there by Van Lith to hit the deck and a tie up. Possession arrow will take it to the other end of the floor. Haley Van Lith really with tremendous hustle there and determination to get down on the deck for that. Do you think bragging rights has anything to do with that kind of I effort? I think you're absolutely <laughs> right. A play like that, and we probably going to see a ton of them today, that tells you what the game means to both sides. I talked to Haley yesterday, and she said this game she expected to be chippy. Every player is going to leave it on the line. She said you're going to see somebody in this game probably have one of the best games of their life because of the rivalry. Always seems to happen that way. Way downtown green, but off target. In transition, car pull up, pop here, and knocks it down. Very determined look by the 5-5 graduate. Well, Kristen Carr is making the transition of playing really a true point guard spot. Coming from Texas Tech at Syracuse, she was a scorer. She really was relied upon to produce a lot of points. Now she's the playmaker for Louisville. Right, that's a long road. Three stops now for her. Sheer outside, gives it up, up top for Benton. Trying to take it into the paint. Grabs her own miss. Right back up tonight again. She thought he, she got fouled on the play. And car into the offensive end. Wants it again. Not this time. And just lost out of play by Petty. Kentucky is trying to get back in this thing. Benton attacking the glass, but on the other end, it's been paint point production for the Louisville Cardinal. You are watching the SEC on ESPN from Rupp Arena, Louisville and Kentucky. The big question here is not who wins the basketball game, but between the two head coaches, Jeff Walls and Kyra Elsey, who wins the kicks game? 
Well, I think, Jeff Walls, when you have your own picture on your own shoe, that helps your game. But <laughs> yeah. when you look at the glitter and the sparkle, and I can guarantee you that Kyra Elsie played, played, paid a pretty dime for those. Yeah. But I've got some shoe game, too. You do. You always yeah. do. Let me get a look at yours, too. I mean, you're right. When you have your own photograph on your sneaker, that's a different level. It maybe, is. Maybe you don't have yours, but I mean. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out how I can get my picture on my shoe. Exactly what that costs, but strictly from fashion, the Wildcats win that one going away. I think Kyra's are even boots. Carr will lift a three. Can't find a range there. Big rebound to keep that one alive. And as Jones went up high, Cochran battling underneath. Not there. And she's down on her back. Numbers here for Kentucky. They want to push the tempo. Jenkins really got it up the court fast. Louisville started the game with size, right? With Liz Dixon playing with Olivia Cochran. Now Josie Williams is in the game. What Kentucky has to do to counter that is use their speed and score transition. No question, Louisville way out in front in paint production early. And Kentucky now gone to a zone to really try to slow down that paint production. Shot clock down to five. Van Lith will launch. And picked off again by Jones, trying to get right back inside that lane, but lost the handle on it. And a tie-up. The possession arrow will go to the opposite end of the floor. Well, getting a stop defensively after the rebound, then what does Kentucky do? But they get off and running, pushing the ball down the floor before Louisville can get their defense set. Kentucky, a team that forces a lot of turnovers. They forced 21 against Minnesota last time. It's actually below the average for them. They're hawking it around 25, 26 a game. That's what Kentucky's defense has been built on ever since when Matthew Mitchell was at Kentucky and then when Kyra took over. They really wanted to score off their defense. Jenkins on the drive. Will kick for the corner and Benton. It's about 27% beyond the three point line. So Louisville with a 14 8 advantage. Russell fast in and she'll go to the line as she draws the foul. Marissa Russell on the attack. Mimi Jenkins missed the shot, but then she didn't get back in transition. And what does Marissa Russell do but just roll, run right past her? Russell, the 5'11 junior from Ottawa. Petty picking up number two. So she'll go to the bench. Russell played for her native Canada, was an alternate on Team Canada at the Tokyo Olympic Games. And that's a nifty three-point play. Now Louisville with the full court pressure. Now, and at times it will be to take time off the clock so that Kentucky doesn't have a lot of time to look to get the shots that they want. Walker, great pass into the lane and the finish. Adeyeye with the basket. The 6-2 graduate, the transfer from Buffalo, but the pass made the play. Cochran outside the three. Last two and a half minutes. Of uh, the opening quarter and knocked in by Williams. Josie Williams just getting in the game a couple of minutes ago and making an impact. Well, Josie Williams is that post player that can score around that free throw line area, and that's where you need against the zone. Get the ball to that SEC logo. Russell with the dish downstairs, but that won't fall. Another battle and a foul with 2.06 to go in the first. And a 19-10 lead for Louisville. One thing they've been able to do right away is take the crowd out of it a little bit. Well, by establishing inside, Louisville was able to do that. But Kentucky now, they're trying to go to their post game inside. Got to balance up those paint points. Never at the line, the 6-3 junior. Coming up next over on ABC at 3 Eastern, the second game of our doubleheader, number six, UConn, and number 20, Maryland. You can always watch it live on the ESPN app. Gina Oriem is down with four guards. Well, we'll see if uh, Nika Mule's going to be able to go because Diamond Miller has really been the 
opponent, the Slayer, being able to knock off Notre Dame and then Purdue. Turnover here on the defensive stop. Little run and jump action, bringing the pres the element of surprise on that trap to force the turnover. Louisville all of a sudden jumped into a zone. Walker to the paint. Jenkins trying to dish it downstairs, and that'll be out of play off Kentucky. And Aville up by eight. Louisville, a team that can play very good defense. They did give up 96 to Ohio State, but they've been holding opponents only 64 a game and forcing about 21 turnovers. Williams off the back iron. Ohio State's going to be a problem in the Big Ten. They forced 24 turnovers. Louisville, they forced ten to Tennessee into 26 turnovers. Jenkins short with a triple. And they're in great shape. Ohio State Buckeyes, they can run for 40 minutes. Van List steps into a long one. So far, she's been a non-factor. Well, that's the thing. If you do not allow Van Lith to get comfortable, and Kyra Elsie was going to mix up who defended her so that she could not be really predict what the defense was going to do. Yeah, Russell had a long one. It was in the cylinder and spun out. Carr, a quick move. Got it to go. Some fancy work with the handle as well. I mean, between the legs, just boom, boom, down the middle. 21-11. Cardinals got to love this start. This is their largest lead of the day. Russell looking for someone to make a cut. Well, defensively, Louisville looks much more connected. And that was one of the concerns that Jeff Walls talked about. And he talked to his team about where to be. you got to take care of each other. Jenkins has to let it fly and hit it right at the horn there. A three-pointer winding down. That was out of desperation, but a big shot. Here's Carr way downtown in the final seconds of the first. And that's how it'll end. And a real nice start for Louisville leading 21 to 14. Chris Carr has really kept the pressure on Kentucky's defense. Woo, what handle she has down the middle. But the Kentucky Wildcats are trying to get back in this thing. They got to play inside out. Jenkins for three. We're in for a good one in two. So don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Right. Man, does that resonate? So on to the second, 21-14, the Ville. Even though Van Lith, who comes in averaging 20 points a game, has been pretty quiet in the early going. They've done a good job on her, her pull up top. And that'll spin in. Nice touch. All ACC last year, likely to be again this year. The Louisville, told, or the Louisville coaching staff told me they were going to run Haley Van Lith some. At the point position, she called and asked Jeff Walls if she could run some points. She wanted to prove that she can help run a team. As opposed to just shooting the basketball all the time. Right, making decisions. When is it then lit time and when is it time to create for somebody else? Shot clock a factor for Walker. Got it up there off the window, but no. Because Van Litt takes an extraordinary number of shots. Twice as many shots as any other Cardinal. Well, she has a great scoring mentality, and she's so competitive, and at times she really feels like she needs to make things happen. She's coming to understand she doesn't have to do everything by herself, but she had a close relationship with Kobe Bryant and really has taken on that mentality. And he, she said one thing she took from Kobe was never waste a moment. And she said that's why she's not was wasting a moment when her, she's been frustrated with this season not starting the way that she wanted to and just being very grateful for the opportunity that she has. That shot did the Mamba Academy and Kobe as well. The scoring mentality indeed. She can really fill it. Trying to get inside and bank it in. And the AA could not make the shot. Let's see if Van Lith really gets rolling here. Dixon back out. 
Van Lith will draw the foul. Benton trying to slow her down, commits the personal. When you watch Louisville's defense, they are all collapsing in the paint. Look at the top of your screen. Robin Benton is wide open. Adiege has got to find that open shooter in the corner. Now Van Lith out of Washington State. Recruited by Coach Walls. He had beaten Kentucky five consecutive times. Russell leaves the defense behind. Jones will let that one fly and knock it down. Morgan Jones. What a beautiful mid-range jumper from Jones. He's got some style going on. Well, she's got great length at 6'2". Really understanding that mid-range shot, when to pull up and when she can take it all the way to the rim. And yeah, looked very unselfish there. Gave it up for Dixon, but threw it away. In transition, Cambridge could not finish it. And knocked out of play with 7.39 to go here before halftime. And maybe a bit of a danger zone for Kentucky. Well, in seeing them, they were in that Bahamas tournament at Bahamar, and they got down against Virginia Tech and able to battle their way back. So if they can turn up their defensive pressure and then start making a few shots, and that was the biggest concern for Kyra Elsey, they have got to convert on the offensive end. Kentucky with several players who can score. They've got eight players averaging at least five points a game, so they get pretty good balance. They do. They will spread the floor around, but they've got to really find the best shot. Like when Adiaye had it in the paint, Robin Bitten was a high percentage three-point shooter. you got to find that easy shot. Way downtown, and that'll clang away by Shear. One and done that time for the Wildcats. Jones going around the back, trying to break away from Walker. Man, lift no. Jones a rebound right back up and in. That's your three guard getting on the glass for the Louisville Cardinals. Morgan Jones right there, tracked that all the way through. On the missed shot, timing. Number 24 in white, Morgan Jones there for the cleanup. with a 6-0 run to begin the second quarter. It has been all about the interior. Stephanie White talked about points in the paint. And if it hadn't been on um, drives or getting the ball to the post, it's those second chance opportunities getting on the offensive glass. Benton takes some contact, couldn't get that one to drop. And so one shot now for the Wildcats. Seen a lot of that here in the first half at Rupp Arena. Backdoor cut, great catch there by Jones, really showing up in a big way. Again, points in the paint, what did they do? They rose the post players so that left that backcourt cut by Morgan Jones. She has been so active offensively, and with the post at the elbow, just a hard sell, and then backdoor for Morgan Jones, and a terrific pass by Haley Van Lith. She had a strong all around. Got nothing. The Cats really need it. I talked to both Morgan Jones yeah, and well, Mikasa Robinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mikasa yeah. Robinson really talked about what a phenomenal athlete and player that Morgan Jones was. And she's always pumping her up about how good she could be. A great job on the other end initially by Van Lift to stop Cambridge. But Kentucky gets it back and scores it. And that leads to a quick timeout here by Jeff Walls. So a couple of hoops that Kentucky desperately needed. 29-18, Louisville. Louisville Cardinal went with the big lineup, and they took a page out of Kentucky's book. They were going to be the team that really established inside, dominating in the paint. It was the post, it was the guards, and it was getting on the glass. It is beneficial for the Louisville Cardinals. Kentucky with only one loss so far this season. But down here, 29-18 at home, expecting about seven or 8,000 in the house today. The corner jumper, that's going to be drilled. Beautiful shot by Russell. It's an offensive foul called. Yeah, shove underneath. 
And Nyla Harris picks up the personal. Take a look. It's on the backside. That was Marissa Russell coming in and shoving in the back, trying to get rebound in position. Shears zips for the corner and bent in. A lot of iron, but it rolls in. Sweet touch there. And that's where they've got to take the open shot. Yes, Kyra Elsie wanted to get downhill and get in the paint, but you got to get the ball to your shooters. Getting it downstairs, and one for Dixon. Got off to a really quick start in this game. Jeff Wall starting her again. She made a big difference. Liz Dixon, when she first came to Louisville, a lot of times she was trying to make too many post moves. Now she's going with a strong move, and then that counter move, the drop step to the left. That's a beautiful finish. So Dixon to the stripe. The foul shooter, 88%. Transfer from Georgia Tech and a three-point play. Got to credit Shay Robinson is new to the staff of Jeff Walls as an assistant when Sam Parcell went moved on to Mississippi State. Shay Robinson had a lot to do with the development. Have you heard the name Shakira Austin? That mm -hmm. was such a great player, <laughs> number three pick in the WNBA draft. He really helped develop her post game, and I see the effect on Liz Dixon. Benton can't get inside. Cambridge gives it up. Green shot off the rim. Right back up and in. Cambridge stayed right with it. Kennedy Cambridge, a freshman, getting some minutes here, and Kentucky forces the turnover. Well, Kennedy Cambridge has only played in two games, but she was really instrumental in that Minnesota game. Came in the last three minutes and really made her presence felt. She is a scoring guard. You know, she's the little sister of Jordan Cambridge that plays at Vanderbilt. Five foot eight. Benton again, and a whistle in the lane with 4.13 to go in the second quarter. And Kentucky trying to cut in. Russell will pick up number two. We're talking about Jordan Cambridge. She also has two brothers that play at Arizona State. You think she's got basketball in her family? I think you'll have a game in the backyard anytime you want it <laughs> back home. Without question. And a highly competitive one. A Tuesday night on ESPN2 in the app, our college basketball doubleheader starts in Chapel Hill. North Carolina hosting the Citadel at 7. And Brandon Miller and number 8 Alabama. What a story they've been hosting Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers at Coleman Coliseum. Alabama off to an incredible start, including beating North Carolina in four overtimes for one of those wins. Then they beat Houston. Here's Carr. Got a good look. Couldn't bury it. Feeling a little bit of a momentum swing here in Kentucky's yeah, favor. Kentucky's got to try to chip this down, get this thing within see, single digits if they can't take the lead going in at the half. Sheer back for Benton. Not afraid to take the shot, but it's inside seven now on the shot clock from the corner. Sheer. That won't drop. They'll get a second effort. Benton from about 18, but no. Sheer went for it and tipped out by Van Lift. You know what the difference is, Dave, is, is the rebounding. Kentucky is getting aggressive on the glass, even though Louisville's trying to turn up the defense. You saw on the back side, Maddie Shear crashing the glass. Dixon pops out and commits a foul. Before the shot, so no basket. That'll be her second. And Kentucky, of course, coached by Kyra Elsey. One of the last times you saw her on this floor, she actually wasn't on the floor. She was descending <laughs> from the heavens, repelling her way down, which was incredible to watch. I got a little bit of fear of heights, and when it's seeing her come down, I'm like, are you crazy? And I think she told me that she had skydived before so I believe it. Yeah. We've seen her on motorcycles repelling from the ceiling. Nifty move by Shear for two. And Kentucky showing some life here. Cut it down to 10 and in front of the home fans. Carr will launch it around and out it goes. 
Kennedy Cambridge with the basketball. She's making a difference. Jolt the life since she came in. Well, slowly to the gap. Rebounding gap is closing right now. Louisville only plus four. 220 left in the second. And a pull up. That won't fall for Cambridge. Another tie up on the play. Possession arrow will keep it on this end. 35 25, the bill. And it's been an absolutely horrible season for the Louisville men. Cardinal women at six and four. Just coming off a final four appearance last season. Picked off by Van Lith, and here come the Cardinals. Jones up high for Robinson. I talked to Mikasa Robinson. I said, when's the last time you haven't been ranked? She said, my whole career, I have not. I've always been in the top 25. This is the first time for her in her career, Louisville, not having that number before their name. Shear with the personal. The Haley Van Lith. She is really doing a nice job of trying to move the basketball and set her teammates up. Dixon the big at 6-5 from Memphis, Tennessee. With another one coming. You're talking about Picasso Robinson. Who's played in, what, 138 victories in her career for Louisville. So you're right. I mean, getting that winning feeling. You know, going back to Sweet 16s every year, Final Fours often, you get used to that. that. That's the thing that the coaching staff even talked to. They're not used to being in this position. It's always, it's been a long time before they're kind of playing from behind or not having a successful November. But we talked about, look, you don't have to win in November. And with the talent that is on this team, I can guarantee you that Jeff Walls will have this team back in the top 25, and they'll be vying for one of those top seeds in the NCAA tournament. You can tell when you talk to a coach how much they like the team, how much they really like their team, and consider their talent maybe superior to just about everybody else they play, even if they're not necessarily winning games right now. Yeah, he really likes this team. And he said, you know, they're great kids to coach. Maybe a little too nice. Wants to have a little more nasty about him. At least you know, one of those, yeah. You, you look at when you would really look at the definition of a Louisville Cardinal team. There's a little bit of nasty that's been there. Oh, every once in a while, yeah. And so he's having to stir up a little nasty with this crew. And you look for that player that maybe the the opposing fans want to taunt. Right. <laughs> you want that one in your team. Yes, absolutely. Kind of like Lance Ware that's on the men's team. Yes. He's that player that really wants to yep. really antagonize the opponents. Minute 31 to go in the second. 36-25 Louisville. Robinson, very tough defender. So far, it's going to be a foul that will take it the other way, an offensive. And it'll go against... Harris, number two. It's a freshman that wants to get her short, her shooter open, but Harris has got to stay still and let Van Lith use her screen. Harris, really good player out of Orlando, five-star recruit. Russell on the drive. He's trying to clean that one up, but that won't fall. Leveretta could not get it to go. And Louisville will take over again with a minute and five seconds to go. And look to the paint. A little off balance there. Kind of forced it. Harris up and in. Nice job to clean it. You can take that shot if you've got a rebounder inside. I, as a coach, I can live with that one. Foul right there at midcourt. That'll be on Leveretter. Van Lith attacks to the middle of the floor. But Harris, the freshman there to clean up. That's something Kyra Ells has got to talk about is those second chance opportunities that Louisville has been afforded. And left over the shoulder, draws the whistle, and she'll be headed to the line for two. Fouled by Russell. So a bevy of fouls here down the stretch. 
of the first half at Rupp Arena. Be two shots for Van Lith, who hits 85 percent. The 5'7 junior. He's been among the top two scorers in the ACC all season to this point. Well, nothing's come easy for Haley Van Lith. She has had a blue jersey hanging on her on every shot she's had a look at. What do you tell your star player, your top scorer, about that? Because that's going to happen every single game. Look, you just have to welcome it. You know, not avoid it. You have to welcome it, but then you've got to pick your poison and look at what you can take advantage of. Benton, short jumper. Cochran with the rebound. Less than half a minute to go in the second quarter. See, now we've got Haley running the point now for Louisville. Bit of a different role for her recently. Looking to take that last shot. Gets it away for Cochran. Cochran going strong inside for two. Boy, that was determination. And that's how the first half ends on a serious uptick for the Cardinals. You talked about what do you do when you're the best player attracted so much defensive attention. When the defense comes to you, find the open player. And that's what exactly Haley did in finding Olivia Cochran. So Louisville on top, 42-25. Getting it done inside early here against Kentucky at Rupp Arena as we send it to Monica. Steph and Nikki for the halftime report brought to you by Jeep. In this game, so up and down for Jeff Walls. He has to be very, very happy. His game plan, in particular, putting Dixon in the starting lineup has really paid off. She had started earlier in the season and been coming off the bench. Louisville at six and four. Kentucky's only lost the one game. But Wall's trying to pick off a rival today at famous Rupp Arena. And we are underway here in the second half. Kentucky in a trapping zone right to start the half. Van Lith putting on the brakes. Here's Dixon. Back to the top scorer. Can't drain that. She has been chilly shooting the ball. And a quick whistle here. And a foul will go against Morgan Jones. What a really nice half. When your team is struggling on the offensive end, what do you try to do? Take the focus and the pressure off the offense and get them a stop right out of the locker room defensively. Start building the momentum for your team on the defensive side. Haley Van Lith, the star for the Cardinals, only six points in the first half. So Kentucky trying to get rolling right out of the gate in the second half at home. Stepping into that one, Benton, and knocks it down. So a good start for the Wildcats. Cochran going in strong and draws the foul. 6-3 junior. Out of Columbus, Georgia. They talked about how Louisville was going to flood the paint, right? So when the but when all of the attention goes to where the ball is, then stepping in, stepping into those open gaps. And that's what Bitten did right to the free throw line area. And a AA with the foul. Cochran, the top rebounder for Louisville, sinks it. She had a pair of Double-digit rebounding games this season coming in. Really good rebounder. Both of her parents were celebrated athletes from Montara and all SEC guard at Auburn and played in the WNBA. And her dad, Antonio, a defensive lineman at Georgia and played five years in the NFL. <laughs> like the Seattle Seahawks. So if there's athletic DNA to be had, Olivia Cochran's got it. Were you a big believer in that when you recruited kids? Well, sure. You, I mean, you look at what the potential could be just from being an offspring of some great athletes. She tears away a rebound. Van Lith will feed Carr. Great fake to get open. Can't knock it down. Jones with another rebound. Great pass in the lane. They move the ball so effectively there. And a whistle. Foul will go against Blair Green. 
especially after a rebound, to continue to attack. The defense isn't set, so you keep attacking the glass and forcing that issue to the rim. Something good's going to happen. So that'll send Liz Dixon to the line. And Kentucky going back to the bench. Petty will return, the 6'3 junior. You know, you talk about DNA among parents and their kids and, and athletes. How about coaches, too? You talk about Kyra Elsey and the great background that she had, of course, at Tennessee winning national championships, being there with Pat Summit. I know you got a million and a half great stories about <laughs> Pat Summit. And some of those involve, you know, maybe a little crown or something on the side occasionally. On the court and off the court <laughs> stories, absolutely. Right. One of my favorite Pat Summit stories of all time, one of my favorite stories anywhere, was having dinner at her house at Tennessee, you know, with her mom doing the cooking. Well, you know, Pat did too. Oh, Miss Hazel could burn it up oh, in the kitchen. Oh, my, could she cook. Absolutely. But Pat had her famous jalapeno corn. Yes, exactly right. Oh, yeah. I never had that anywhere else or since. It was that was one of her specialties. Sheer off the window will draw the foul. But what a great host. And you talk about some stories, her legendary career. And she would tell them in such a humble manner, as you know, but you came away going, I can't believe what she made, 14 presidents and all of this is unbelievable. Um, but every person she was in the room with, she made them feel like they were the most important person at the time. Truly did. Truly did. Made you feel 10 feet tall. Coming up next over at ABC at 3 Eastern, second game of our doubleheader, number six, UConn, and number 20, Maryland. And, of course, you can always watch it live on the ESPN app. You know what I love about that app? So my husband drove me here to Lexington from Nashville, so I can connect my hotspot on my phone. I got my laptop up. He's driving, so I get to watch that game. I don't have to miss it while I'm driving back yeah. to Nashville. You have a problem, and it's, it's great that he puts up with you. <laughs> Dixon off her fingertips and out he of play. He gets to put up with he me. He gets, gets the honor of putting up there you go. with the Hall of Famer, <laughs> Carolyn Peck. I would, I would say that's true He's on behalf of all of us. You coaches are all alike, though. Oh. It's like you can't get enough. You know. Watching games while you're driving to the next game or the airport. What a better way to pass the time about watching basketball. Teddy in the paint, trying to dish it downstairs. Green, heavy traffic there will draw the foul. Blair Green takes a hit. She's been solid in her return to action. She had to sit out all of last year with a ruptured Achilles. Robinson with a personal. You talk about this rivalry meaning something. It does to Mikasa Robinson. She's the only kid from Kentucky that is on Louisville's basketball team. But she is a player that leaves it on the floor. Blue collar, tough defensive presence. She took an elbow to the head against Middle Tennessee. Didn't know she was going to actually be able to go today. But, look, there was going to be – you're going to have to – Probably put an armed guard around her mm. not to have her play in this right. game. Ashland, Kentucky. You mentioned she has the ball here. She's played in more games at Louisville than anybody on this floor and on the roster right now for the Cardinals and about to get into the top ten. Dixie couldn't finish it, but she will take a hit and go to the line. Angry at herself she didn't make it the first time. But Morgan Jones takes off and penetrates in. Dixon's got to finish that one. That's a highlight reel. Out of Memphis, Tennessee. 6-5 grad. Sinks the first. And so Louisville up by 17. Here in quarter number three. Louisville trying to keep their streak alive against Kentucky, trying to make it six consecutive wins against the Cats. And that's going to be a violation of five seconds. Wins like that on the defensive side to get a five-second call, showing the connectivity defensively. Everyone following their assignment. Who's in the middle of that? Mikasa Robinson. She helped on both players that were wanting to receive the basketball. Don't you love the reaction of a great defender when they do something like that for a five seconds? 
she hits the deck here. So pumped up about that like she had hit a game-winning three. I, look, I loved a player that got more excited about getting a defensive stop than they were making a shot on their own. Sacrifice is what it takes to play defense. And she with a big block on that play. Here's Jones lining up a long one, but that didn't touch anything. That's going to be a traveling violation right there on the baseline by Bent and couldn't find anyone to get it to and turns it over. Compounded back-to-back -back turnovers for Kentucky. It's not going to help them chip away at this lead. Down by 18, and Louisville trying to make it worse here on this possession. Carr trying to get it in, had a little difficulty there. Jones jumping up high for it. You see how athletic she Jones is. is? I mean. She's fun to watch. She is so fun to watch. She's a similarity of like a Kevin Durant with the length that she has. Just really got to get her offense going more consistently. But like we talked about a rebound and bring it. But how she can leap in the air, go snatch the ball. And lift another shot she can't hit. Gets it back in the paint. Van Lith on the baseline, and no basket but a foul. She's fired up, has not had the day you might have expected, fouled by Shear. She's one of eight from the floor, so she's wanting to see that, first, that second basket go in for her on the day. Came in averaging 20 points a game. Outstanding foul shooter, 85%. That's Haley, how she dealt with this frustration. And she said, you know, my parents have been great. She said, you how you want to call home and talk to your parents and complain? She said, my mom and dad, they shut that down right away. They said, you can do better. Don't waste your time thinking about the negative, but look at, control the things that you can control and you do better. Stay focused on what you can do. And I thought that was, and she said, I listened to them. She said, I don't always want to because I want them. She's like, can, sometimes can you not just take my side? <laughs> and her parents don't give in to that. Right. Whistle here to stop the clock at 6.59 in the third. It'll go against Carr. And she will pick up number two. And a 20-point lead here for Jeff Walls. Jeff Walls made the decision in playing teams that played a four out more of guard oriented to go to the smaller lineup. This time he decided to dictate against Kentucky and he be the bigger team and make that the opponent adjust to him and it's really paid off. Well, you talked about it before we came on the air that you felt that was going to be the focus. Walls obviously listening to everything you told him in practice. <laughs> that's paid off. <laughs> I didn't tell him anything. I only listened to Coach Walls. He's a pretty darn good coach. As we mentioned, the winningest coach in the program's history. Four final four appearances for Jeff. He's got a little daughter who can really play too. Walker on the attack. And no basket there. It's going to be waved off. His little girl Lola was absolutely adorable, but a fierce competitor. And yesterday, Lola hit her first career three-pointer. And she's not here today because she's got a game. And her mom is Lauren, now Walls, that played at Vanderbilt, who was a tough ball player. And Jeff told the story that even in the winter, when it's cold outside, Lauren will say to Lola, oh, you could be working on your ball handling. So <laughs> Lola will put on head muffs and go outside in the snow working on her ball handling. <laughs> that's, that's a coach's kid and, and the wife of a coach uh, exactly. who is a player in her own right. You got no choice. No choice. You're, you're going to be a player <laughs> in the snow. And Petty can't get that one to roll in. So right now, everything breaking the Cardinals' way here at Rupp Arena. It really kept this crowd pretty quiet most of the day. Louisville, by the way, 0 for 6. Field goal shooting in this quarter, but they're 8 for 8 at the line. Finally, they knocked that one down. Russell, Dixon, I should say, getting that one to go. That's a good decision by Haley Van Lith. Look, she's going to attract so much attention. She gets the ball cut in the paint and then gives it up to an open shooter. 
Petty, yes for two. Wildcats, one of the few occasions here in the second half, moving it quickly. 52-32. Van Lith with a jumper. And yes, nice touch. Nice soft rim. You saw her clap her hands, a relief for number 10 in white. Haley Van Lith, working on her decision making. When the defense is attracted to you, then you give it up. And then when it's your time, it's your time. Hello, Anthony and LeBron James. I mean, you know, you're going to be expected to yeah. rise to greatness. Jeez, man. And doing it. Right. Says a lot about those young men. Liz Dixon leading the way for Louisville with 16 points. And Deville comfortably in front here in the third, 54 32. And taken away once again by Olivia Cochran. She's having a really good day. Dixon in the starting lineup. I say go big when you're playing against a smaller team. Make them adjust to you instead of you adjusting to them. Jones kind of stumbling and fumbling through the lane there and gave it away. But not many mistakes like that today for the Cardinals. <laughs> Jeff Walls is telling Morgan Jones, just slow down. Slow down. Now how will she bounce back after that mistake? As a coach, that's what you're looking at, right? You want to see how your player is going to react after making a mistake. Pick yourself back up. Well, because the players come to Louisville to be coached hard, right? Mm -hmm. They want to be great. They've looked at the success of the program. That's why they chose Louisville. Pretty good look there by Walker, but it was in and out. Petty pounding the deck, and yes, up and in. That's a strong move. Asia Petty, the transfer from LSU, has really taken full advantage of the opportunities that she's been given here at the University of Kentucky. Kyra Elsey describes her as bouncy. She's great, active, and allows them to play inside out. She was against Minnesota, 16 and 12 for her in that game. And poked away by Cambridge. Cambridge working against the big. Great feed there and laid in by Jenkins. Outstanding pass. Kennedy Cambridge, just a freshman. She's got some game. This is what Kentucky did against Virginia Tech in the Bahamas in the second half. Just kept chipping away. Opportunistic off turnovers and then went straight down the score. Just a little bit at a time. But you don't have to take a huge big bite. Chip away. Cambridge in transition. That's the way Kentucky's going to have to go about getting back into this ball game. Well, by now you know the news, the great news, that Brittany Griner is back in the United States. Released from Russia, back in the USA, flown to San Antonio. We welcome home the great Brittany Griner. For many of us who've gotten a chance to cover her throughout her legendary career, this is such a satisfying story. Detained for nearly 300 days and freed in the Russia USA prisoner exchange and you know, I go back to covering her at Baylor when it all started for her on a national stage and just a shy kid till she got on the floor <laughs> and then right. it was incredible <laughs> and then going on and making her presence felt the WNBA and then the other part of Brittany her heart in the city of Phoenix Arizona she was out and she would see homeless and she would give them a meal that she had or shoes she started the shoe drive to donate shoes to homeless people I mean, just a heart of gold and so happy that Brittany is home yeah. aren't we all a great moment to have her back in the United States 54 and 38 Louisville Van Lith is open and can't drain that she's been off target a good chunk of the day, but her team hasn't been. Coming up on three minutes to go in the third. And off her fingertips and out. And on the other side, Jada Walker, who we had profiled in the open, one of our stars for Kentucky. I mean, so far, goose egg, she has failed to score. Morgan Jones being on her defensively has a lot to do with that. That length and size, it really has taken away driving lanes of Jada Walker. Jenkins looking to penetrate. Tough angle, but it went down. So this is an 8-0 run for Kentucky. For the defensive stops or the miscues by Louisville. 
Not the foul on Jenkins. Well, Jenkins fouled down there, but she went in over the size of Liz Dixon for the finish there. Fourteen point game, but it's been a lot worse than that. So it's Robinson at the line. She's their best foul shooter, 93 percent. Now the crowd starting to come to life a little bit for one of the few times today, sensing they have a chance to get back in it here at Rupp Arena. And the best foul shooter for Louisville can't hit. Going to keep it here on the baseline, 2.46 to go in the quarter. When Kentucky and Louisville play each other, you can't ever say, it doesn't even matter how what the scoring difference is. That game's not over till it's over. Petty reaching over the top, commits the foul, trying to contain Cochran. And Asia Petty with number four. So Kyra Elsie will go back to the bench. And a yay back in. And Cochran to shoot, 61%. And a junior can't hit. So suddenly a bit of a lid on the rim here for Louisville. Louisville normally a 74% free throw shooting as a team. And Cochran second. Got that one. So 55 to 40. We'll see if Walker can get going offensively. She's 15 points a game. Jenkins with the drive. No. Comes out high to Van Liff. And Robinson will set it up now for Jeff Walls. Good transition defense by Kentucky. They want to stop the ball, slow it down, give time at least to have opportunity to defend in the half court. Ben Lith with the pass, and there's Jones on target. But those two are fun. Athlete is the best way to describe Morgan Jones. 6-2 grad, her home, Jonesboro, Georgia. Here's Walker. Got it. Knocks down a three. So Kentucky still very much alive in this thing. The way the last six or seven minutes have gone. Van Litho commit the foul. Back to that long pass, the alley oop. Van Lith working on setting up her teammates, and what better target to have than the long length and athleticism of Morgan Jones to kick, kiss it off the glass. Robinson to shoot. Walker with the foul. And Shear coming back on to run the offense for the Wildcats. The problem for Kentucky is they're getting a little too antsy. Defensively, fouling. Instead of being disciplined defensively, just work on getting stops because you're allowing Kentucky to, or Louisville to get to the free throw line and add to that lead. Louisville's actually done the majority of their scoring in this quarter at the foul line. And she makes the pair. So back up to 16. Nia Russell, the junior from Baltimore, getting some minutes here for the Wildcats late in the third. In this zone, get ball rotation and get the ball to number one. She's in the top of your screen. That's your shooter. Benton gets it, fires away. Can't drain that, but a foul here with a minute 15 in the third. And Cochran will pick up number one. So two shots coming. Now the AA at the line where she is perfect on the season. Not to jinx anybody, but four for four. And naturally. <laughs> That's why I didn't say anything. I'm like, oh. Happens every time. Well, Kentucky needs to make the free throw so they can get their pressure set. Well, how long are they? They've got to really turn up the heat. 
Try to force some turnovers. Well, they average 25 turnovers forced a game. Jones kicks for Robinson. So Louisville found the open shooter, but can't hit the shot. Talk about an open shooter and drained by Shear. Maddie Shear has not been very good from three point line, just six for 21 coming into the game, but perfect on that one. And that was smart because they can now go two for one. They can have the last possession of this quarter. Van Lift. No. This hasn't been her day. And how about this? They have an opportunity to be within 10. And I Russell doesn't understand this time and mm. score. Lucky to get to the go to the free throw line right there. Maddie Shear in the corner, wasting no time. Knocking down that three. Just the heads up, methodical guard that she is of understanding what the time is and the situation she needed to pull that trigger. Dixon's foul will put Russell at the line to shoot two with 22.3 to go in the quarter. And Kentucky making a push here. I mean, if they can get, you know, to 10 right. into the fourth, that's got to be everybody's mentality. Wearing blue right now. Well, and Asia Petty's on the bench for Kentucky with four fouls. She's one of their go-to post players. They can buy time to be able to get her back in. And Russell, a transfer from South Carolina. Missed them both. Van Leth can set up a shot here. And the final seconds of quarter number three at Rupp Arena. Louisville has led virtually all day. Here's Carr. Carr took a look at the clock, got to get a shot in the air, and hits it. Right before the horn. That was pretty smooth. Carr, the 5-5 grad, drained it. 61-47 going to the fourth. Well, Kentucky tried to sneak in, close the lead, but as the clock is running down, number three, Chrislin Carr, a shooting guard, a scoring point guard, able to knock it down for the Cardinals. And they had an opportunity to cut it, you know, to 10 or less with one of those possessions in the final seconds of the third. Well, the first time today, Kentucky's held Louisville under 20 points in a quarter. Shear to drive it. Banks that in for two. And a sheer average is only about six points a game, but also six assists and five rebounds out of a guard. Let me tell you, Kyra Elzey is going to make Maddie Shear a score if it <laughs> <laughs> kills her. Right. Needing a little help today. 61-49, early seconds of the fourth quarter. Shot clock inside 10. Trying to feed down low for Harris. And a foul in the paint. And they'll get Benton for that, and that's going to be number three on Robin Benton. And Jada Walker about to check back in now for the Wildcats, replacing Russell. Now Walker's the one they really need to get rolling. Everything that Walker tried to do early in the game was getting downhill. If she's open from the perimeter, she's got to look for her shot. Sheer with the block. So for the two stars we highlighted, Walker and Van Lith for Kentucky and Louisville respectively, it's been kind of a frustrating day. Cochran pounding in that paint. That rolls off. Got the shot she wanted. Second effort. And they'll back it out, set it up. Van Lith running the point. Cochran up to set the screen. And Lith on the drive. And a travel. She has been hit with a couple of those, and they've turned it over 13 times. Now can Kentucky capitalize on the turnover? Walker in the paint. Good defense by Cochran. She really stayed home. 
Kentucky's not getting to the free throw line. Louisville's been there twice as many times as Kentucky. Good crowd here today, 7,927. Marissa Russell's heel was on the line. That could have been a backcourt. They did not see it. Russell lets fly, but no. Cochran hit the deck. We got numbers. Benton trying to drive it, shut down, and a travel. Harris got up to defend, did a nice job there. 61-49, Louisville. Louisville trying to win the seventh game of the year. Kentucky has only lost the one. That was to Virginia Tech down in the Bahamas. Virginia Tech ranked number 14. Virginia Tech has a really good basketball team. Their defense is tops in the country. Their men and women both very good. Cochran will fall away in the paint and got it to go. And Olivia Cochran had a big impact on this game. Shear with a turnaround. Rebound tipped and controlled by the Cardinals. Well, Cochran with Russell or with uh, Nyla Harris in the game or with Liz Dixon allows Cochran to play the four. It can move her around on the court. And let's look to penetrate Walker before the shot with the foul. With a little over seven minutes to go, that'll be her fourth. So Jada Walker in all sorts of trouble. You know, these rivalry games, as you said, somebody's got to show up big, maybe a little bit unexpectedly. Maybe you can say that about Liz Dixon today. 16 100%. points, you know, getting a start today. Right. I would agree with that, that she, given this opportunity, you know, she started the first four games of the season, and then with the adjustment of the style of play, teams they were playing, she was coming off the bench and playing solely the five. Van Lith will draw the foul and go to the line for a three-point play. There was no way they were going to stop her on this possession. Ben Lith has had to work extra hard, extra effort overtime to get scoring opportunities. And she has continued to drive, get to her strong left hand, and that time able to finish through contact. Now Leveretta with the foul. Has to settle for two. They chase it down in the corner, but it will be Kentucky ball. It has been so tough for Kentucky to go on anything longer than say a you know four or six nothing run to really cut into this hole that they've dug for themselves today. And a foul off the basketball. Under seven minutes to go on Van Lith. Number two on Haley. Kentucky's going to have to go with quick hits. Yeah, a one-two pass offense to get a good option for a look. That's not it. To drive in one-on-one, -on -one, you got to know that lane's there before you take off. Robinson with very sticky defense and blocks the shot. Certainly her stock and trade. Mikasa Robinson just continues to stay with the play defensively. She is so smart on the defensive end. There's a real art to that, too. Blocking a shot without committing a foul. Nice play there for Green to pick up a bucket, 65-51. I'm really surprised, though, after the score, Kentucky didn't pick up with a full court pressure. Because Jeff Walls is going to have his team use as much of the shot clock as possible. Down to 10 here. Rolling inside and flipping up the basket, Harris. And a timeout, Kentucky. And a play like that when you're down by that many really hurts the Kentucky Wildcats. When time is on your side, no need to rush. You will get what you want. Patience will pay off. And so far it has for the Louisville Cardinals. Up big. More women's basketball ahead, folks. Uh, of course we want you to stay here and finish this game with Dave and Carolyn. But at 3 o'clock, if your appetite is not satisfied yet, you might want to check out this top 25 matchup between number 6 UConn and number 20 Maryland. That's Diamond Miller. What kind of numbers will she put up on ABC at 3 o'clock? Meanwhile here, fourth quarter, 
67-51 Louisville in control. Haley Van Lith, who's been off target today, but her team has played very well around her. And one of the top players in the country looking to pick off Kentucky in their home arena. It's still time for the Wildcats to make a run. How do they do it? Well, the Wildcats are going to have to score quick, go to quick hit sets. It won't necessarily be just one-on-one -on -one making plays. Lowell has been really good at defending off the bounce. It's a great switch. Haley Van Lith up, up top. Russell down, kind of clutching at her neck. Marissa Russell, the 5'11 junior, is in pain here. Well, on the switch, when Blair Green went down to post up, yeah, you saw it right there. Her right elbow caught Russell in the throat. I don't think it was anything excessive. It was a post-up move. And they got Russell for the foul, and they're going to head over to the monitor to take a look and see if there's anything else forthcoming. If you look just to the right side, you see Blair Green's elbow catch Marissa right Right in the throat. And she went down again. Russell was hit for the foul. And as the ball went out of play, she was clutching at the neck. Now, if anything, I would have maybe projected that Blair Green be called for the offensive foul mm -hmm. with the high elbow. So let's see if anything else is forthcoming. Exactly six minutes to go here in the fourth. And take a look to see if a flagrant is in order. I'll give you one more look. What do you think? Well, I think the officials are seeing if there's anything excessive or malicious. I just think it was a basketball play. So fans watching are saying, well, Marissa Russell is the one who took the brunt of it. And yet she got called for the foul. Well, but if you look at, it's usually actor, reactor. We'll get word here on what they took a look at. Brian Hall's coming over to tell us. So they did call a personal foul on Melissa Russell, and then they're going to call an intentional foul on Blair Green. Mm. I, I didn't think that was. Excessive. I thought it was a post up move. Unfortunate contact, maybe I would load it, label it. I think maybe that second push off after the elbow and then the yeah. extension of her arm. This would be two shots for Haley Van Lith on the other end. As Louisville continues to add to the lead. And makes the pair. So the lead moves up to 69-51, Neville. And of course, we'll check it in at midcourt. And they have a genuine chance to really bury Kentucky here. And Kentucky really needs to get a stop right here. They need to get a score, and then they need to put their full court pressure on. Van Lith demanding the ball. On the move, on the spin, and blocked out of the sky by Benton. Terrific defensive play there by Robin Benton. She's only 5'9". Well, you know, when Haley Van Lith goes right more times than not, she's going to come back to that lift, that left. And Robin Benton timed that perfectly. Nine on the shot clock here for the Cardinals. On the tough drive, up and in by Harris. It's a really strong move by the freshman there. So now getting out of hand, 71-51. That's up and in for two. So a little bit of life here for the Wildcats. It, and it's going to be once again Benton on the move. 
Well, going and scoring quick is what Kentucky needs to do to get themselves back in this ball game. But Jeff Walls has to feel really good about how Louisville has played in the absence of the quantity of scoring he normally gets from Haley Van Lith, but the balance that they have had as a team, even with her struggling, her shooting woes. Well, they got a big one out of Liz Dixon today. Got some great minutes out of Olivia Cochran today. You mentioned Carr played very well for long stretches of this contest, too. And a balance, you know, having seven, eight players getting into the scoring column. Well, great experience. Nyla Harris going to the bench. The freshman gave him some really good minutes in the post. Cocker on the left hand, can't finish it. Aja Petty back in with four fouls. Shear gives up the dribble. Here's Benton again. Green, close in, but no. Big battle for the rebound and another whistle. And Robinson picks up number three. Jeff Walls wanted that to be called a, a jump ball. I kind of agree. And he will go back to the bench and bring Dixon back in. Now Russell kind of hobbles off. She's had a tough quarter. Benton steps back for a long one. Got it. Three pointer. And if you remember the SEC tournament against Tennessee, Benton hit some big threes to advance to the finals. Van Lith really getting involved offensively. She's hunting shots in the fourth. Shear with the foul. Robin Benton with the step back and the three. She's one of the better threats from beyond the arc for Kentucky. Van Lith to the line, 85%. Louisville has really done good work at the foul line. They've been there a lot in this game. And a junior with another one coming. We have four and a half minutes to go. And Louisville unable to completely break away for much of the second half, but they've been comfortable. Just where the point's going to come from for Kentucky. Petty in foul trouble, gets that one to drop, and she'll be at the line. Here's your Petty, 6-3. Makes about 57% of her shots anyway. But Petty's got to be careful. Did you see that inside hand? Kind of pushing off. She's playing with four fouls. These officials nowadays could, they could call that as an offensive foul. Dixon with the personal. And a three-point play. Coming up next, we've got hockey coming your way. Coming up at 3 o'clock on ESPN. Seventy four fifty nine less than four to go. The jumper won't drop for Benton. Shear had a layup right there off her hands and out of play. She can't believe it. Blair Green. And that's going to be a traveling violation. Done that a few times today. Jeff Walls is telling his team to slow down. The clock is on their side. Sheer lets fly. A nice feathery touch there on a two pointer. Kentucky within 13. Yeah, Maddie Shear and Robin Bitten, only two players in double figures. And a foul as Robinson will hit the deck. Benton with another personal. It's 
So that's going to be two for Robinson. And four fouls now on Robin Benton. Robinson the line. Shooting two, six the first one. Maddie Shear for Kentucky, by the way, with 16 that ties her career high. Going in averaging only about six points a game, as you said. Kentucky determined to make her a scorer. 331 remaining. She's found her opportunities. Maddie Shear's got to shoot the basketball. She's got to come in with that mentality. Not only is she a distributor, but a score as well, and that has been different since she has started her college career, not the role she played at Oregon. Betty battling her way inside, got another one. Back to 13. When you look at the free throws, Louisville has made 17 more free throws than Kentucky. Walker breaking away, finds Benton. Yes. Is there enough time here for Kentucky? It ain't over. I was wondering how long it would be before Kentucky brought their full court pressure. Poked from behind, and Shear will get hit for the personal. Trying to knock that one free. That's her fourth. 2.29 to go. And Van Lith to the line, which is usually bad news for the opposition. Van Lith, or uh, Robin Bitten looks gassed. She has really had to put in work in this fourth quarter. And now playing with four fouls, and Van Lith makes number one. And that's really where Louisville's been able to maintain this advantage at the foul line. That has been key for Louisville is getting to the free throw line, being strong with the basketball. They knew the kind of defensive pressure Kentucky was going to bring. And Kentucky will take a timeout. 2.25 remaining, 78 to 65 Louisville. The Robin Benton has really turned up in the fourth quarter. She has 17 points on tonight. She's done just about a little bit of everything on the defensive end as well. She has been that spark. Can she be enough in the last two and a half of this ball game? Well, Louisville doing what they can to run clock and get it fairly late in the shot clock and get to the foul line where they have been making them. Louisville had a series offensively where they ran the shot clock down to about 10 seconds. Ball movement around the rim to get it back to the middle and then a ball screen and he had a post slip to the basket. Instead of trying to hold it and make too many unnecessary passes, that's when you turn the ball over. But moving the ball, it's a drill that you probably do every day in practice that's more of really kind of a keep away. Just, you know, coach says you got to make five, six passes before there's a shot to do that. Read the defense. If you're denied cutback door, somebody else replace. But instead of playing not to lose, you got to play to win. Right, and that puts you in a better position to take care of the basketball. 17 points, 7 out of 16 shooting it. Look at the other numbers, too. She can rebound the ball and five assists. Back for Shear. Shear underneath, no. And draws the foul. Missed the first one from close range. Kentucky is dangerous. Ask Virginia Tech. And they, you may have thought it was out of reach. It's 13 points right now. He, she makes these two free throws. Get the press set. She could Kentucky force some turnovers. Yeah, that could be right back in this. Jeff Walls has to be concerned that Louisville, his team, in bringing the ball down the floor, you got to keep possession. You don't have to be in a hurry. Look, the best, the worst thing you could do 
is just get a get a backcourt 10 second call. Press Don't it rush. again. And that one's free. And picked up by Walker. They do force the turnover. Petty gives it up. Got a mismatch. Carr inside. Trying to guard Petty. Petty trying to get an angle underneath. Flipped it wildly over his shoulder. And no whistle on the play. Wildcats give it up. They had done everything they wanted to do to get the ball back. Here's Van Lith wide open. Rebound is up and in by Morgan Jones. Who's had such a big impact on this one. Jones seven rebounds today. One and done. Cochran with the rebound. Nobody back. Robinson. It's a smart decision. Run some clock. In an 80-67 game. Robinson just frankly lost it. I should say a car did. As she went to make a move and simply lost the basketball. Kristen Carr is adjusting to learning to be the point guard. She was a scorer at Syracuse, a scorer at Texas Tech. And in this situation, she's got to command and control the ball. Walker around and out with a triple. And inside the last minute. Kentucky's got a foul. Stops the clock with exactly 50 seconds to go. Blair Green with number three. And that'll put Robinson, the Kentucky native, to the line. And she is the best foul shooter. Expect her to get a lot of touches here in the last 50. 93%. Today in this game, Louisville has looked more like the team that was ranked higher early in the season. They've been more connected. They've shared the basketball. Defensively, they've been locked in together. Petty in the lane. Up and in and draws the foul. So the junior back to the line. Van Lith's third foul. On the drive and the rotation. And that's a matter of trust. Right, when you get beat on the drive, the first rotation is there. Then you've got to trust that the help, the helper is going to be there for you and not foul. On the miss, she gets it back, but gives it right away. Right back to Robinson. And Shear stops the clock here, but that is certainly all on Louisville's side, leading 82-69. Maddie Shear with foul number five. And out she comes. Jeff Walls talking with Carr, the 5-5 grad, but has to be very, very happy with this performance today against a Kentucky team that lost only once. And Carr is playing, I feel like, the toughest position on the floor, especially when you play for Jeff Walls. He just demands so much of you in running the team, and you've got to learn those tough lessons now so that you are still playing in late March and even in April. Which they fully intend to be. Benton again and swishes in to three. And you've seen a lot of fight out of Kentucky. The problem is they got themselves in such a deficit pretty early in the game. It's been uphill ever since. Yeah, early on trying to attack the paint and Louisville was really flooding the paint, not giving up those kind of shots as opposed to playing more freely the way that they are when they're playing more desperate at this time. And a timeout by Jeff Walls. 19 seconds to go, 30-second timeout. Well, Haley Van Lith didn't do much scoring early, but has in the fourth. Got a slow start in the first half but for the game, 19 points. But what has been so impressive for me with Van Lith is even though her shot may not have been going as smoothly as it has been earlier in the season, it's the other thing she's done on the floor. She has defended. She has given up the basketball. Van Lith already has 
four assists on the game. The rotation defensively, the talking, the communication. She looks exhausted vital. too. She it? does look tired, right? She's not alone. It's the way the game has been played. And you're talking about a rivalry game. As you said, it's always elevated. And another foul. So Walker with the personal. That's her fifth. Well, Van Lip has played all 40 minutes of this ball game. She's not been out. So Van Lip, chance to get right back to that average of 20 points a game. So one way or another, the scorer finds a way to score. Yeah, her shot, she can't get her shot because she attracts so much attention to the defense. What does she do? Get to the free throw line. That was her 15th free throw attempt of the day. And Kyra Elsie is going to be advancing the basketball here. Got to look for an opportunity for a quick three, either from Robin Benton or from Blair Green. And telling Asia Petty to go rebound like her life depends on it. If you're Jeff Walls, you're just trying to defend. Give up the two, not the three, and definitely do not foul a player in the act of shooting. 86-72 Louisville. Satisfying enough to knock off a team that has played as well as Kentucky has in the early going, but to come to Rupp and do it in a rivalry game, twice as special for Coach Walls and the Cardinals. Now they will foul no more. And so Louisville will have a very satisfying win here today over Kentucky. Well, Louisville did a terrific job. They established in the paint early. Then as the game went on, Van Liff got going, but they stayed connected for the majority of the 40 minutes. That's a good showing for the Cardinals. ESPN Hockey Night presented by Expedia. Colorado taking on St. Louis coming up next. Dave O'Brien for Carolyn Peck. Let's send it now to St. Louis, Missouri.